Okay, so in section uh, 8.1, we're gonna be getting into hypothesis testing. And this is gonna pretty much just be a quick overview of some key ideas. We'll work out some full hypothesis tests starting in uh, section 8.2 and on. So just if you've ever taken any uh, science class, uh, a hypothesis is the same idea where we make a claim about something. So for example, if you have a uh, you know, water, you leave that outside for a while, you can make a hypothesis that perhaps the water has evaporated. Um, in statistics, though, we're a bit more specific and we set our hypothesis equal to some value. So that hypothesis would probably be something that we would say perhaps 75% of the water will evaporate or at least, uh, or, or more than 75%. So something along those lines. And so our null hypothesis is that uh, we're always equal to some, uh, to some value, that there's uh, no difference. And our alternative is going to be that it contradicts that in some way um, so that it somehow differs. Not necessarily the opposite, but that it somehow differs in that case. So our null hypothesis we're going to denote by HO. And then our alternative we're going to denote by HA. And so our null our no hypothesis is always going to take on uh, the equal sign and our alternative would take on not equal, greater, or less than. So that it somehow differs to that. Uh, some textbooks uh, actually use the null with greater than or equal or less than or equal. But typically in um, uh, when we do research, uh, they tend to let the null uh, be the equal sign. So we're going to go ahead and work them out uh, in that fashion as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, do an example here. So here we have a medical trial that's uh, conducted to test whether or not uh, medicine reduces cholesterol by 25%. So we're going to start off by uh, denoting the null and then the alternative. So HO and HA. And so the first thing we want to see here is, are we talking about means or proportions? And technically, we could also have standard deviations. We'll wait for that. Uh, we'll talk about those in uh, one of the, the following sections. And we uh, just like we did in confidence intervals, we're looking for those key words. And it doesn't say anything about means or the word proportion. But there should be something that gives it away, and in this case, it's going to be that percentages. So we know we're talking proportions. So when we write our null and alternative hypothesis, we're going to go ahead and label that with uh, P for proportions. So we typically use mu for our means and then P for our proportions because we're trying to see if we could say something about the population proportion or the population mean in this case. And uh, we want to be able to identify this claim. So these are the only symbols we're allowed to use here. And the keyword here is that it reduces. So whenever we say reduces, that's going to correspond to less than. And since the alternative is the only one that could take on that symbol, we're going to fill that in first. So we're going to have the proportion is less than 25%. So the cholesterol is lowered by 25% there, or 0.25. And I want to make a special note and note this as my claim. This is going to help us later on when we start uh, doing our conclusions. So by default, let's, fi uh, let's figure out the null here. The only symbol for that one is going to be equals, because that's what it always gets. And we're still talking about that 25 cent there. Okay. And so again, uh, the alternative we always want to say that it somehow differs, so we're trying to do a contradictory. And this is going to be our first step in our four-step process when we do these uh, hypothesis tests. Okay, so let's try some more examples here. So here's a couple, and if you want, you could pause the video here and give it a go. Okay, and actually, let me change this here. All right, and I'll just cover that up. So uh, here's my null. Uh, there's my alternative. And recall, the null and alternative you gets one of those symbols here. And I want to first identify what am I talking about. And I'm talking about means here. 
So I know I'm going to use Miu. So I want to say something about the population uh, mean this time. And here's our claim. We want to say if it is different. So is different is going to be not equals to. And so we're going to have mu is not equals to 2.0. And again, I'm identifying the claim. That's going to help us out in a later step. So let's fill out our null. And that's going to be that it's equal to 2.0. Okay. I just kind of blotted out the solution there. Let's go ahead and write this out. Okay. All right, so same idea for uh, the triad 8.3 here. We're talking means once again. And in the symbols, the null always takes equals. The alternative could be not equals, less than, or greater than. And this time around, it said that the greater is uh, uh, 66 inches in this case. The eighth greater is 66 inches. That means equals. So this time... The null is going to be my claim, so we're going to write as equal to 66. And then by default, the alternative then is going to be not equals to. Okay, here's another one. So let's identify the null there, then the alternative. And again, you could go ahead and pause this and uh, give it a go. Okay. So this time around, we're talking about proportions. So we're going to use P. And we're checking that it's 40% uh, is the value that we're comparing it to. And I'm just writing this as a note for now to remind me what symbols could go for each, the null and alternative. And we're saying that is more than 40%. So that's going to be a greater than. So our claim, that's the first one I'm filling out. It's whatever the question was asking there. I'm going to fill that part in first there. So by default, our null is going to get is equal to 0.40. Okay. So this is going to be the first step in setting up this hypothesis uh, uh, test here and identifying. And as I stated, we could also do standard deviations. We'll kind of get into that a bit later. Uh, let's talk about some other key things here as we introduce these ideas. And so here we have a table of outcomes. And so all we're doing in a hypothesis test is we're really just making an educated guess given the, the data that, that we've collected and we're looking at there. And similarly to if um, you know someone is on trial, it's possible that we get it right, that we actually, um, a person uh, is guilty Right, and then uh, we end up sending them to to jail, and so that's a correct outcome. Or if someone is innocent, and we end up not sending them, right? So, but there's it's possible that we make an error. We could send an innocent person to jail, or a guilty person we could let out, and so those are error types, and that's going to be similar with our hypothesis test. If the hypothesis, if the null hypothesis is actually true, and we end up not rejecting it, that's a correct outcome. Also, we could say that uh, if it's uh, false and we end up rejecting it, that's also a correct outcome. But we do have different type errors. You could have a type 1 error or a type 2 error. So this is not 100% certain. We're just uh, kind of like the confidence intervals. We're saying with a percentage of confidence and we're making a very strong educated guess. But it's possible that we could make a wrong conclusion on that. And when we make our conclusions, uh, right here, when we make our conclusions, uh, here are a couple of prompts there whenever the null is a claim and then whenever the alternative is a claim. And so uh, notice here on the alternatives, uh, we say that uh, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim and then there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. Whenever the alternative is a claim, it's not as restrictive because it's less than or greater than or not equal. It just means that it has to differ somehow. So there's more flexibility and we're allowed to kind of support evidence for that. Whenever the null is a claim, it's more restrictive because it's exactly equals. It has to be to that value. And that's a lot harder to do. So we never say that we uh, support it. What we'll rather say is, something along the lines that there is sufficient evidence to warrant a rejection or uh, 
something like this one here. There we go. So there is uh, not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. And it kind of sounds like a double negative. I mean, it's a double negative. There's not sufficient evidence to warrant a rejection. So doesn't that mean we accept it or support it? And not necessarily whenever we say those double negatives. So we're going to be very cautious with our wording as well as we do these write-ups. And so we'll follow these prompts. And again, on step four, we'll get more into this here. And then here's kind of a diagram of, uh, we're always going to want to draw a picture. We'll do this in one of the steps as well. And I want to just tie in some of the key ideas that we've uh, talked about before. So when we did the normal distributions, here we have um, uh, alpha. And so uh, alpha, if you recall, corresponds to some z-score. And I'm going to put CV there. Uh, we're going to call this Z, uh, uh, or we're going to call this one the critical uh, value. Okay. So these are critical value there. And if you recall, if we do an inverse norm on this, we could actually get the area. And so this always goes with the area of alpha. or what we call the significance significance level. Okay. And all of that shaded region there is what we call the critical region. So this is that kind of that purple part that's shaded there. Now, in turn, if I pick another Z score here, we're gonna call I'll label this TS. This is gonna be our test statistic and our test statistic goes with the area of the p value so that's this area if i were to make a marker right about here it's going to be this shaded area right up in here okay and when we do these tests what we're doing is we're trying to compare two z scores ultimately our alpha is uh, that critical region is a set of values where we would end up uh, rejecting our null. So think of it this way. If we're in the outskirts, there's very, very little probability on the outskirts there. So stuff is unlikely. So we're going to end up rejecting uh, versus if we're somewhere uh, underneath where the big um, uh, loop is. So somewhere around here, then we end up with a lot of area inside of there. And that makes something uh, more likely, so we do not reject. So since we're gonna be favoring the calculator a bit here, uh, let me just write this down. If we have something along the lines where your p-value is less than alpha, then we reject the null. Okay, so that's always gonna be for the null there. Because uh, we end up being in that critical region there. Something that's going to be unlikely. Uh, the other way around is if we have something along the lines where if I perhaps... Let me do a new sketch here. If we had something along the lines where here's kind of my uh, alpha, let's say. Okay. And let's say this is my alpha uh, right in there. And then this is going to be my Z critical value, whatever that number is. And say I had something where over here was my Z test statistic. And so this area over here, I should say the area from this all the way that way is going to be the P value. So all of this area, it also includes that alpha there. So we have something like this. If your P value is greater than alpha, then we uh, do not reject the null hypothesis in this case here. And if we're using tables and doing it by hand, you're going to want to compare those uh, z-scores to each other. That makes it a lot easier to just compare z-scores because we could see which number is bigger and smaller and where we're going to fall at. But uh, typically, if you're using technology, it's going to give you areas. So we'll usually compare those.
Okay, so that is a very brief overview of some of the key ideas in the hypothesis test. Um, really, the best way to do is just to get straight into it and do a hypothesis test, and we'll go ahead and do that on the next section.